Great, so I got a couple of topics I wanna to talk about today which are gonna be really cool. Um, mainly, I wanna start now in August giving a couple of updates because we have a, some cool events that are gonna come up. Uh, we are participating in the Lightbox Expo. I think guys who have been following us for a while know that. We were one of the sponsors of the Lightbox event and uh, happy to do that. It's really great to network and that event last year in Pasadena was, was awesome. Of course, because of the whole corona pandemic, we're going to be online this year, which I actually think is a benefit because a lot of people that could not go and show up in person at that uh, LA event, they can now show up online. And uh, that's going to be really, really cool. Lots of networking going on still and lots of ways to connect. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, events, live streams, inviting really cool story peeps to talk about uh, the industry, talk about tricks. Uh, talk about everything under the sun really that's related to visual storytelling and to get ahead in the business uh, There's a lot to do with that and it's important to get things uh, Like clear in your mind so you have a strategy when it comes to getting jobs when it comes to improving your art When it comes to putting your portfolio together and speaking of putting your portfolio together That's one of the most common questions that we get is uh, How do we how do you put your portfolio together? What do you need to do? What do you need to show? It's a little bit surprising to me that this information is not that well known. Um, so that's what we wanna do is, uh, is make sure that you guys know about that. So one thing that we are sponsoring is a drawing and portfolio challenge. That's gonna come up at the end of August, I believe, at the beginning of September. Um, not exactly sure of the dates, but I'll make sure that you guys know about it uh, soon. So these are some of the updates I wanna tell you. That drawing portfolio challenge is coming so you guys can get your drawings tight follow along with a couple challenge exercises, and then by the end of it, we're gonna do some networking and a portfolio uh, revamp so you have something to show to the studios and at least you know what to be showing and how to do it in a proper way so that's professional, okay? Then we're also going to participate in Lightbox Expo, and that's coming up in September. The dates for that are September 11th through 13th. So you can check out our website for updates or go to lightboxexpo.com and they can uh, you can see a lot of the, the planned events. So it's not just us on Storyboard Art. There's plenty of other things to keep you guys interested, but I hope you guys tune in to what we have uh, planned for that too. Cool. All right. So that's uh, some of the updates that we got for, for that. I did want to talk a little bit about um, breaking through some of the sticking points when it comes to either career, story-wise, technique, any of that stuff. I think what happens, if you're anything like me, you, you start working through uh, story sequences and then you might get into your flow, but at a certain point, you, you reach a, like a wall and there's a barrier there because like the creativity might just stop for a second. And then that is important to get things back on track as soon as possible. But I want to talk about some of the sticking points because it's either with me what I what ends up happening is that I'll start drawing something and getting there and then something will distract me. I'll get a hang up. Like for example, I'll have to draw a really um, a really elaborate vehicle. Like say it's some kind of tank that I'm not familiar to draw with. So then I'll have to go look for research and I can't find any of that stuff. And then I'll do some like video re reference. And then what happens is I just I get caught up on that one thing. And then trying to draw it doesn't come out. I got to redo it and I got to redo it. And what ends up happening is I, I start getting frustrated and then my, I can feel my stress level coming up because the deadline is always looming. And I feel like, oh man, I just wasted three hours on this stupid storyboard panel. What can I do to just move forward? And oftentimes what I find when I'm in that situation is I will... I'll sketch it out as best as I can and I'll leave it and I'll move forward to something else that goes faster. So usually like something I'm more comfortable with would be like uh, character poses and uh, you know simple dialogue scenes you can blow through really quickly. So then I'll do that and you, it makes you feel good that you've, you've caught up on some of the, um, at least on some of the sequence. Then you go back to that. What, what ends up happening for me, because this is like a pattern that I find that I repeat, is that when I go back, to that difficult point, let's say I'm using this example of like a, some military tank I don't know how to draw, right? I go back to that, the second time around now, I'm somewhat warmed up, I'm, I'm like determined to get through it, and, um, and I might have like broken through some, finding some of the, the reference or whatever it is that I needed to get through. Sometimes in a studio environment, you just ask the guy next to you, and you, you, maybe they'll, they'll lend you a hand in actually drawing it, <laughs> or they might point you to the right reference, 
or they might just give you a couple tips or some supportive like motivation to be like, come on, man, you can do it. And that's really all you need to get you through it. Um, what also really helps is you got a producer that comes in and knocks into your on your door and be like, hey, so you're gonna have that this this Friday, right? That's gonna be ready for to show. And then that's like, oh man, all of the hangups that you had before just go out the window and you just get it done. You find a way to get it done. That's that's really what what happens. But I, I want to hear from you guys if you have anything that is on your mind when it comes to um, sticking points. Could it, is it drawing? Is is that is that something that you guys are struggling with? Um, and this could be this is different for everybody, okay? So I think you know to me the drawing aspect of what we do in visual storytelling is always something that we have to keep on on top of, just so that you have your skills sharp and that you're always um, that you're always like uh, warmed up when it comes to your technique. That's why I talk a little bit about like dojo training and having a routine and you're always practicing, even if it's as simple as taking your sketchbook with you wherever you go. And I, you know, I use that coffee shop example a lot. But let's say, let's say now when you're locked down at home, I mean, there's plenty of things that you could be drawing even in your own house. You can be drawing uh, like every room in your house, right? Your kitchen, your bathroom, your bedroom, messy, cleaned up, doesn't matter. That's actually something interesting. A lot of, uh, you know, I follow a lot of famous artists that they would, they would paint their hotel rooms and stuff like that. And it's it's just a standard hotel room with a bunch of sheets, but the the messiness and the the lighting and all that kind of stuff is something that you can you can create a story with and you shouldn't there shouldn't be any lack of inspiration when it comes to actually your drawing practice the other thing you can do which is um actually really uh an, an advantage that we have in, in the day and age that we live in is looking at at film reference online looking at figure drawing reference and photo reference online there's just so much stuff that you can do so if you like i gave that example of a vehicle right if i don't know how to draw a certain helicopter i can just easily go in and search for for a particular helicopter or just the helicopter shape right now back in the day when i was first starting out you had to go to the library you remember that you remember you had a library card you had to go in there and you check in and get books and these all right that's that section do we decimal system you know that remember that that's like ancient history right <laughs> the point is now it's like so easy all that is just at the tip of your fingers and i remember having to look through books and, and i would collect reference cut out magazine photos this was all the stuff i was doing like when i was in art school just to kind of get a uh you know reference library built up at Lucasfilm, when I was there, they have the Skywalker Ranch Library, which is super impressive, just architecturally speaking. You go in there and you're just blown away by how beautiful it is. There's like a, a, a spiral staircase that's that's built out of one, I think it was, it was, it's one solid piece, or it was made out of out of, um, I think the central column is out of one one tree, <laughs> one tree trunk, something like that. It's just amazing, okay? Then on top of that, they have a, a crew of, of librarians to reference things for you. So if you need a specific subject, they can find it for you. And um, so if they have the books uh, there in the library, you can they'll, they'll give it to you and you essentially check it out, right? Um, lately though, that, like, let, that happens less and less because of course the internet kind of took over. But that reference library is amazing. You'd go there and you could see the you know the the original um, uh, books from back in the '80s when you know Star Wars was really hot. You could even make an appointment to go to the archives library, which is where they store the uh, the costumes, the matte paintings, the original concept designs for Star Wars. I got a tour of that a couple of times, and it was just magical to go in there. And you really have a strong appreciation for the guys that worked back in the day. Um, creating those things, right? You see original Ralph Macquarie designs who designed Darth Vader and all of the lightsabers and everything that we know as the iconic um, Star Wars stuff. And that was back in the, um, in, the, in the archives. So that was a really good... It was just super inspiring to see it. Then, of course, you see the props. And I saw the Indiana Jones uh, you know, diary from Indiana Jones 3. So all of those things are just... That's there for, for reference. In fact... Um, just as I'm on the subject <laughs> and reminiscing, they uh, uh, George Lucas bought the Universal Studios um, reference library back when I guess they were clearing things out, and that assimilated into uh, the archives library that they had at Skywalker Ranch, and then they had multiple copies of things, and at a certain point they they let people 
in the studio take home some of those uh, multiple copies. And I even have some books and, and reference books actually back on here on my bookshelf that have the, the original uh, library cards from the Universal Studios reference library. And they, you know, I don't have one of these copies, but they would tell stories of like uh, Alfred Hitchcock would, you know, his signatures on there because he would check out certain books. So and there's like, you know, famous artists and, and uh, filmmakers that would use that reference library when they're when they're creating their movies. So that that's really magical to have that reference. OK, but those are one. I'm just saying these things so that that you guys remember it's good to be inspired and get through some of the blockages so that you can actually push forward and, and do your work that way. OK. So um, anyway, let me hear what you guys are up to and how it's, uh, uh, you know, how some of the things that, that maybe have, have been sticking points in the past, maybe how you got through it, because I think that could ha also help us a lot, is that we, we understand maybe some of the, the mindset that you had to go through to actually break something, you know, break through it, okay? Um, another thing I will mention when it comes to, uh, you know, having breakthroughs and getting to the next level, let's say, of of doing your storytelling is there's there's a certain technical level which I actually find is much easier to overcome because uh, you could you know certainly you can do a search online if you're if you're doing freelancing at home but if you're working in the studio environment you just ask the guy next to you there might be somebody who's a real pro and whiz at doing you know 3d stuff or technical solutions and then you just lean on those guys to actually help you solve the problem um, so that technical part I actually don't see as challenging the drawing part uh, that I mentioned earlier, that one I think is always something that stays with us. We always want to stay sharp with our skills. And yes, you can also ask somebody who's near you to, to help you out with some drawing uh, issues uh, if that's the case. But I think the, the other thing I wanted to mention is the story uh, blockages that we sometimes have, the creative mental blockages that it's hard for us to imagine new creative scenes. and. Uh, if, you, if any of you guys have been there, I think you'll know how frustrating it can really be. Like, I literally have to sometimes just get up out of my chair, walk around, you know, by myself. I'll usually try and isolate myself, you know, grab, grab a coffee or take a walk or whatever I have to do to just get away from my desk, but actually just sit there and think about the solution. And oftentimes it just, it doesn't come naturally, it doesn't come that easily, and that's where you get that blockage. And uh, that frustration takes over and then it can sometimes be hard to, to progress. So that's where uh, one of the things that I, I do, and this is, um, this is really when it comes to working in the studio environment, you don't have the luxury all the time of, of just you know, wasting hours, okay? You have a deadline looming, you have to get things done. So a couple of things that I've learned over the years is, um, and this might seem a little bit like bullheaded, but you have to power through it oftentimes. So let's say I get to a point where I don't know what the solution is, but I'll, I'll throw everything under the sun and just try multiple iterations of a solution, no matter how crappy and terrible they really are. And I'll do that because um, at a certain point, at least it eliminates the bad ones. And then out of those bad ones, I can sometimes like compile something actually good. There might be a gem there that I haven't um, that I haven't considered fully. And so that's some of the things that I'll do to, um, to get through my creative blockages. Now there are points, and this is most of the time this happens on personal work that I'm doing, where there's like a complete lack of confidence and I don't have, um, I don't have any solutions for the creative things that I'm trying to do. And this is probably because I'm doing something with uncharted territory. There's no script there. Um, there's just a blank page and me trying to get through it. The reason why I think things flow in a studio environment is you have multiple levels of, of creatives. So if, if there's a writer that gets started first, then that way it's easy to take what they've done and actually tweak it. And, and I'm actually a pretty good engineer of taking somebody's ideas and, uh, and plussing them up visually, okay? So that to me is just having a starting point. At least you know the guidelines and where it's going. Uh, it also helps us to have like a director or somebody else who's mentoring you to get through that um, to get through that assignment because it, it's really helpful to have uh, a second set of eyeballs and also somebody who who has a different benchmark for what 
you're trying to do. So as a story guy, if you're working on a sequence, you kind of have uh, tunnel vision and you're just working on that one sequence. But the director has to worry about many multiple things at once and that director will usually have a overall perspective and they might be able to push you in the right direction if you get stuck. So that's why it's nice to have a really supportive environment in a, in a studio setting um, so that you can have that going on. Now, what we should be talking about too, and I will mention this, is that in this current environment where everybody's kind of working remotely, one thing that uh, I've seen people do is they're, they're always on the chat uh, and not to screw around, right? Yes, we've all do, <laughs> done this where we send stupid cat videos or whatever back and forth or conspiracy videos. I used to love like at Lucasfilm when we were talking about alien conspiracies, all the videos would go around and I would just dive deep in that stuff because I, I love that that uh, that lore, right? That that legend of, of the possibility. Um, but that's a distraction stuff. I'm talking about the creative conversations that you have with your coworkers and your peers, so that you can push things forward. And I I find every time I have a creative a question for somebody, a team member or a peer or or somebody else that I'm just asking about. They will jump on it because I feel like they they really want to help out and be creative and give you that solution. Like there is no shortage of ideas in the story team, and I'm the same way too. So if somebody says, "Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble with a particular scene, uh, the wide shots are not working," you know, what should I do here? And I, I love to rack my brain and try and see if I can problem solve and make that happen. It's also a lot easier if you're from a distance and you have a different perspective. So that that's cool. Uh, that's cool when you're working in teams like that. Okay, um, right on. So let me let me get to this question. Uh, Chad Prickerell is here talking about a couple of things. He says the hardest thing I think when it comes to getting through a portfolio is the oh here's a big event I need to figure out what I want to do for my portfolio. This is kind of talking about the portfolio stuff I mentioned at the beginning and that whole mindset. I, so Chad continues here, I oftentimes would work on a very rea in a very reactive way, so when it comes to something like CTN or big training application, I would try to get something special done and often end up rushing it because it's the, like the marquee thing. What I'm trying to do is treat the whatever the next project is as the next marquee event. That way, when something comes up later, it's not, oh, I need to figure it out what to make, but instead, what cool thing that I have made do I want to showcase? That's an awesome comment, man. I think uh, that's very, that's, I could relate to that totally. Um, it, it's this like, it's this like desire to, to, to do something specific for that, that, um, that project or that job. I remember trying to come up with specific samples for, for a job, like either if it's like cartoony stuff or realistic stuff, and I don't have enough in my portfolio, then I, I try and go back and um, and I'm, I'm, I'm coming up with something really quickly because usually when a job posting comes up, you probably only have like a window of about two weeks, maybe three to four weeks um, with that, that job posting uh, before you really want to apply. Otherwise, you're going to get, you know, other candidates are going to start flooding that stuff. And there's, there's, there's always a good number of competition when it comes to a job opening. So then you create original samples for that, trying to like really show off and see if you can do it. Uh, then the pressure is on, and what I, what happens there is I feel like if you're not relaxed as you're doing that stuff, then it doesn't come out right. None of my stuff come, comes out right, and I think it's because I'm I'm stressing, I'm overthinking it. So I can totally re relate to what you're saying. One thing to do that I think is is hard. It's easy to say, it's harder to get done. Is that you stay consistent with with drawing in your own way, in your own style. And that's why I really recommend having an art routine, having something that you do consistently on a daily basis, if not daily basis, then at least on a weekly basis that you set aside time so that you're creating art that can be uh, directly applicable to your portfolio. This is something that we're gonna be going over with this drawing portfolio challenge that I mentioned at the beginning. And again, that's coming in uh, uh, late August, early September. And what we're going to be doing there is doing specific exercises and, and walk, walking you through it, working there with you so that you're not alone and that we're going to challenge each other um, and do stuff that can be directly applied to your portfolio. So at least there, within a short period of time, you can do a couple simple drawings. Like this is not, 
you know, creating this amazing, elaborate, uh, you know, mural painting. That's not what we're doing. We're doing very targeted and uh, clear but simple and well-constructed storyboard panels that you can put into your portfolio. That's really what I think um, will show off your work. And then you do that over and over again. And you build that up by repetition. And after a while, after a number of months, it actually doesn't take that long. If you think about it in the span of your career, just a couple of months, it's not that big a deal. You can come up with a really solid portfolio. That's going to land you a couple of jobs. Those jobs that you get are going to create more images that you can add to your portfolio. And then you just keep rolling from there. You have something that you can build on. And you go from one job to the next. You start building up your network. And, um, and then after a while, you start being selective about the things that you do. And you, you're, you're on a roll. You have a career. You're, you're moving in the right direction. That's really what we want <laughs> with those kinds of things. Um, <laughs> I love it. We got a we got a comment here from from Yannick who says this is even though uh, you know English is not his first language, he really <laughs> he really likes this uh, this content and this is his favorite page. Thank you, my friend. Let me see if I can get a, a like on there for you. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, any questions from from the guys out there? Uh, we're happy to take it. But I think the the main topic that that I'm trying to get at here is that really anything worth accomplishing becoming a really strong artist is not easy but it is 100% worth it it really really is and i'll tell you and i'll tell you why on many levels okay one yes you can say you get the professional level which essentially can get you paid give you jobs make you um, you know have have a career make you have a living at what you're doing right which is which is a reward in and of itself essentially you're you're getting paid for doing creative work that's fabulous Okay. Now, the other thing is there is a, a personal satisfaction that I think uh, we should all get as artists that by being creative, that process of actually problem solving, creating images and doing something that feels satisfying when you do it um, is just a reward in and of itself. Not everything that we do is going to be a winner, right? I think it's easy to glorify like uh, some of the top guys and top talent out there, which they're all around. There's many artists that are super amazing, super pro. Certainly if you look at Instagram, ArtStation, or anything like that, you just get blown away, sometimes overwhelmed by how talented a lot of people are out there. But what you don't see, and this is what I think it's important to highlight, what you don't see is all of the work that it took for that person to get there. And I guarantee you, and I will debate people until the day I'm, I die, that this topic is that nobody gets there with just like a magic wand. No, there's no art pill that you can take that's going to make you amazing. You have to work at it and love it so much that it becomes a passion and a joy. And this, this hobby turns into a, just this firing passion in your heart to create something. And after a while, you get the results that you're looking for. And, it, and even at that point, it doesn't necessarily become easy. What, what might flow a little easier is the technique and maybe the problem solving. You actually come up with an image that's satisfactory. But at that point, then what do you have to do? You have to take a hard look at what you're doing and push yourself even further so that you can uh, go beyond the level that you're currently at. And those are where the greats lie. That's, those are the, the grandmasters that we all study and look at in the museums and maybe uh, you know, honor. Even in the, the recent history, right? I, I, you know, I, I follow a bunch of people on Instagram on my, my personal account. By the way, you should all follow, follow me. <laughs> Go to Sergio Paez Art um, at Instagram and, um, and we can connect. That's another way to network. But anyway, I, I follow a bunch of artists that post uh, like the classic Disney animators. And these guys were just heavyweight juggernauts back in the 60s, 70s, and even earlier, 50s. And, and I'll even say back in the 40s when they first really started doing feature films. And the stuff that they were doing is, is such a wonderful high level. And you see the pencil test and, and you see the sketches. And it's like, these are the guys that came before us that we should be studying. And hopefully we can push the, our stuff to the next level as well. Um, what we do also um, in some of the courses that we have, like one of them that's coming up again, is the mentorship that I've mentioned a bunch of times. But we study films. We study other artists. We study how people have gotten to the level that they're at and, and figure out how we can reverse engineer that so we can do it ourselves. I always say this is one of my, 
my uh, analogies is that you can probably figure out how to drive a car on your own, but if, so- if somebody shows you how to do it, uh, it's going to be much easier. You're going to crash a lot less, okay? <laughs> so that's really why you want to have a mentor and somebody guiding you along to do these things because uh, it-, it gives you the shortcut that you need <laughs> to get to where you want, all right? So let, let me know what if, if you have any similar experience. I'd love to hear it. Pardon me as I take a little sip of water. Um, the other uh, thing I want to mention is that in, in conjunction with pushing ourselves and breaking through, let's say, um, some blockages, what we also want to be thinking about is how we're going to put this in to a strategy so that we can get ahead. I don't think it's, it's enough anymore to be an insular artist and just to be at home doing your do your own thing, you're freelancing, and maybe every once in a while you're publishing the social media, but there there isn't a there isn't a thought behind how you're actually approaching maybe some of the career move career moves that you want to do. That's why I like to put this in this kind of holistic idea so that you can get ahead and that you're you're taking advantage of all of the opportunities that are presented to you. Um, I just see that as a practical thing. I'm a real practical person that way because I don't like to waste time and I certainly don't like to race, waste resources. And that could be resources of, of, your own, of your own talent, your own time, your own skill, your own money. Um, and it's just because if, if you can put that to a better use, you should. And there, there's many avenues that you could do. Some people are doing short films. Some people are working on uh, projects with, with other collaborators, other friends. And this keeps you motivated and pushes you forward to, to do the things that you want. It doesn't necessarily always have to be a studio job. I think that's, for a lot of people, a goal that they want because you want to be working in an environment with other talented people. And you also want to get paid. That's really important there too. The credits that you get on these projects are also really nice. And... Um, they're nice in the sense that people recognize the work that you've done, and then that will hopefully lead you to the next stepping stone that you can improve and jump on later, you know, later in your in your career. I remember meeting a couple of people, and they were impressed with my <laughs> with my simple uh, IMDb entry. Like I didn't even I don't really take note of that stuff. I don't manipulate it. I, you know, at one point, I think I, I tried to upload some some credits there, uh, kind of early in my career. But after a while, those things kind of self-populate. I even forget some of the projects that I worked on, and they show up there like, oh, right, that's right, I remember that. Um, at any rate, th- that gives you a little bit of, of uh, clout, of recognition, so that people trust the work that you're doing. And that way, um, you know, that's what those studio gigs will, will essentially give you, okay? Now, I shouldn't... One of the things I should mention is that your your worth as an artist is not based on any of the credits or any of the, the jobs that you've had in the past. It has nothing to do with how much money you make. It has nothing to do with uh, you know your your current skill level. Any of that. Any of that. What your worth as an artist is something that I think should be very personal. You should only compare your stuff to yourself. You should only compare your growth to yourself. And it's very easy. It's like I said, mentioned you go online and any social media accounts where you see artists there, you you just get you might get inspired, you also might get discouraged because you see a lot of really talented people there. What I would recommend is that you you look at that for inspiration, but never compare yourself to somebody else because you have no idea what they're going through. You have no idea what they've done to get there. And they have no idea what you're doing to get there. Okay? And you sh- I think it's it's important to appreciate your own personal journey and to recognize your own accomplishments uh, as well. That will also inspire you to get through. Because um, one recommendation I, I say, uh, you, and maybe you guys have heard me say this, is that you save everything that you do. You save all of the sketches, all of your sketchbooks, and um, in fact, you can see one of my recent posts that uh, that we took some some footage of. Like, I have boxes full of sketchbooks that are just filled, <laughs> and I keep them. And it's sometimes fun to go back. One, they're kind of journals, right? So I go back and I look at them for story ideas, for you know travel experiences that you know I might have forgotten. And it's nice to refresh my memory on those things. But it's also good for inspiration and and to see 
how far you've come. Sometimes I look back and say, wow, you know, that drawing's not so bad. I, I actually think that one turned out okay. Whereas what, probably when I did it, I was so uh, focused that I was kind of frustrated about the outcome of, of the particular you know, drawing, let's say, or sketch. Um, and then looking at it after a couple of years, you can go back and actually appreciate what you've done. And that's where you see the growth. I, there are things that I can see now that I'm doing that I have, uh, that I have maybe won some of the bad habits that I had before. <laughs> so I've gotten through uh, to a certain level where I am, I'm growing as, a, as an artist and I can see it. Like I, I can actually look back and, and see this from a distance and say, ah, you know what? I wasn't able to control my values, let's say, or I didn't have enough uh, command of my line quality back then. But now I'm actually, I can do that now. And, and that's a really satisfying thing. And this happens over time, over a long period of time. So that's one thing that I think we should all remember is to have a little bit of patience when it comes to our own career growth because you're it's very difficult to see this on a day by day basis. It's really hard to see growth day by day. Even week by week, and I would say even month by month, what really you should probably do is every three months, every six months, do an assessment and see if you've actually grown or improved. That's really what will uh, show a little bit of, uh, of traction <laughs> when it comes to your growth as an artist. And that hopefully will help you break through some of the sticking points that you have, right? Uh, so one of the recommendations I've said before too is that at the end of the year, you might wanna go through uh, your drawings and actually look at them. I have in my filing cabinet, I put what I call temp uh, drawings and, and temp figure drawings and temp studies. And it's in a folder, it's in a, and it's a big drawer. And at the end of the year, normally, if I, if I remember to do this, because sometimes I go uh, more than a year but I'm actually going through those those images I'll pull out all of those uh, all those sketches that I've done and actually look through them and I what I'm doing there I've saved everything I've done throughout the year but what I'm actually doing to actually look through them is sift through the ones I really like and 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 throw away the ones that I don't and I yeah you know sometimes I actually throw away uh, the ones that are, are really terrible <laughs> I'll admit it but uh, I, I keep a lot of it and that's one way to see year by year like I have a stack of drawings every year that I really liked, and that's my kind of my growth benchmark that I'm seeing. You can even go back. Uh, one of my greatest fears is that I'll go back and look and be like, "Damn, I was really good back in you know 2011. What what happened?" <laughs> that's like my greatest fear. I don't want that to happen. I want to be constantly growing as an artist, and some of those um, some of those uh, some of that inspiration that I have comes from meeting other veteran and seasoned artists that are in their golden years, let's say, uh, of life, you know, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they're still powering through at, at just an, an enormous high level. And uh, that to me is so inspiring. I wanna be, those guys are my heroes. I wanna be like that. There's a couple really amazing examples of that that I've had in my career. So I'm, I'm on that path. I wanna be on that path. I hope you guys are there with me as well. <laughs> so cool. Anyway, I just wanted to give uh, those little tidbits of advice, hopefully that makes sense to a lot of you guys because it is hard it's it's easy to get discouraged this is not an easy field to get into but is there any field to get that's easy to get into I mean let's see hmm I'm gonna try gymnastics tomorrow let me see how I'm gonna do at that I'm gonna suck that's what's gonna happen is because you need years of training to be able to be doing flips and whatever an awesome gymnast can do right same thing with dance same thing with any any kind of art form or any kind of uh, anything that's worth it. You really have to put in the, the, the time and effort. And yes, it's hard. You're going to get discouraged. But there, I, I say this a lot. There is no greater feeling than actually seeing the emotional response on a sequence that you've created and a story that you've done. And you're, you're sitting in the room with an audience member who have seen your work for the first time. They start laughing. They start reacting to where you want them to react. That is a wonderful and addictive feeling. And I think all of you guys should really, uh, should really have that experience. And that will, that will make sure that you, you keep on truck and, and pushing through some of these sticking points. All right, friends, it's great to uh, connect with everybody. And I hope, um, uh, I hope you guys are, are, are enjoying the journey and keep up, keep up the hard work. 
I'll keep on the announcements as well too. So uh, later on this week, we'll have another live on Wednesday and you can see the replays of this on our social media as well. So connect with us and, uh, and hope to see you guys at Lightbox on, and uh, that coming up in September. All right, friends, talk to you soon. We'll see ya. Bye-bye.